Do you like sorrow or pain? Probably your answer would be no. There is no one who would like sorrow or pain. But today, I want to talk about this sorrow or pain. You might think like, oh, that's not a really good topic that I want to listen to. However, you know the sorrow and pain are very real, so that we need to know what that really is. Now, I heard the news not、uh, not too long ago. There was a man and、uh, his son. They were just normal family, but one day he received a phone call from police office, and then he felt like there was something wrong. And sadly, he was right because his wife was involved in a car accident, and then she could not make it. How devastating it is! Now, if you are not in their shoes, you will never understand how deep the pain would be. This pain will last forever, like until they die. So the sorrow and pain are real; they are everywhere in our life. Everyone goes through some sort of, some degree of sorrow and pain. However, even though the sorrow and pain are not good, the Bible today, to this passage, is saying there is a good sorrow. How can sorrow be good? Now, there is a good sorrow and a bad sorrow. The good sorrow is a godly sorrow. But the bad sorrow is worldly sorrow. The question is, what's the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow? Isn't sorrow all bad? Well, that is not the case. So I want us to look at Second Corinthians chapter seven, verses eight through eleven, to see the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. So let's look at the passage today. For though. For though I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I see that that letter caused you sorrow, though only for a while. Now rejoice, not that you are made sorrowful, but that you are made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you are made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that you might not suffer loss in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the Sorrow of the world produces death. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow, has produced in you! What vindication of yourselves! What indication! What indignation! What fear! What longing! What zeal! What avenging of wrong! In everything you demonstrated yourselves to be innocent in the matter. Amen. There are three differences between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. So let's look at them. First of all, the godly sorrow is by will of God, leading to repentance. Ultimately, it leads to life. But worldly sorrow is by self-will. It involves the regret. Ultimately, it leads to death. So you see the stark difference by God's will, by self-will, by repentance, by re-、uh, regret, and life and death. So let's look at. One by one. Now, I want us to look at、uh, verse ten. But before we look at the verse ten, I want to let you know some of the context here of this letter. Apostle Paul wrote a letter, and that letter was not pleasing. It was not pleasant a letter. It was kind of a、uh, kind of harsh because there was some sin going on among the、uh, Corinthian churches. So when he was writing this letter, he knew that this letter would be、uh, very sharp and maybe painful to the people of. Corinthians. However, he, he, yes, he was right. But the thing is this:、uh, instead of、uh, being offended, they began to repent of their sin, and by that, Apostle Paul was rejoicing because of God's grace that was bestowed upon them when they were reading, as they were reading this the letter. They realized their sin and they repented of of their sin. So that is the story, the context behind of these things.、And、then, but this can be applied to us. How can godly sorrow be good to us? Because it is conducted, it is led by the will of God. So let's look at verse ten together. It says, "For the sorrow that is according to, according to the will of." God, so it really tells us that there is a sorrow. There is a sorrow by God's will. Not every suffering or not every pain is by God's will. Sometimes we, you know, we make a mistake and we sin, and because of our sin, the suffering can can be caused. However, God allows the suffering. Second, Second Timothy,、uh, chapter three, verse twelve. If you choose to live godly, you will be persecuted. So that is a sure prophecy that if you live according to the will of God, if you want to live、uh, for the glory of God, you will be persecuted. So the 
the troubles and the difficulties that you might encounter in my experience because uh, for the sake of the gospel of Christ Jesus, it's not surprising because the Bible already told us to do. However, there is also another godly sorrow when we go wrong, when we are in the wrong direction. As good father, God sometimes chastises us. He disciplines us. Through what? Through godly sorrow. But how does he, uh, uh, so how does they do that? He uses his word or he uses our circumstances to really uh, help us to realize that we are in the wrong direction. So we need to change our courses. So that is really the, uh, the, by the orchestrated by the will of God. That reminds me of the story of prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15, it's a story of a father and two sons. And the younger son was a wayward child. And he took some of his father's money and he went off. And then he used all of his money. And then he became a homeless and he was eating with the pigs. Um, and uh, he, that might be a very painful experience for him. But he did not uh, stay in the pain. And then he realized that he came to his senses that he needed to come back to his father's home, but not as a son because he felt like he was not worthy uh, to be called as a son. But he said, you know, I want to go back home, but not as a son, but as a servant. But the father was waiting for him to come back. And then he, uh, he held the biggest, the, uh, the feast ever because he said, my son was lost. Now he is found. So that is really showing the God, the father's heart. But that story really tells us that you know there is a sorrow there's a moment of rock bottom moment and I went through a rock bottom moment uh, in 2000 and it was very painful because everything that I tried turned out to be failure so I had no job and my everything uh, I, I did just did not work however God used that sorrowness for for me to meet God. God used the Hebrews chapter 10, 10, that Jesus offered his body once for all to forgive my sin, experience the forgiveness of my sin by the blood of Christ Jesus. So it was a huge blessing. But that sorrow was not really from me. It was not by my will, but it was by God's will. God orchestrated by his perfect will to turn us around from our sin so that we can turn to the Lord, just like a prodigal son, just like myself. However, there there is a worldly sorrow orchestrated by self-will because we want to, uh, I want to do something, I want to get, the, I want to make more money, and then so I will be uh, rich, but when that does not happen, it becomes a sorrowful, but even if I get a lot of money, the money does not make me happy, so that I, uh, whether I get, a, whether I have a lot of money or not, I'm always sorrowful, I'm surrounded by sadness, and that's happening everywhere. Uh, you know the story of rich young ruler, he had a lot of money, but he also wanted to be saved, so he came to Jesus asking, how can I be saved? And, you know, Jesus said, you keep this, you keep this, but ultimately you need to uh, give everything that you have and then you follow me. But sadly, this man loved money more than Jesus. So he chose to just stay with his money and he became so sad, he went back home. So how would it be, what would be his end result? Even though he had everything, but he had nothing because he had no Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, love for the money is the root of evil. And it will, it will um, uh, take you away from faith and it will destroy you to the core. You will be filled with the sorrow. Money is just one example, but we have so many idols in the world. It could be a fame, it could be a immorality, but whatever feels in your heart, if you are chasing after that by your own will, you will end up with the biggest sorrow. Not just in this world, but that sorrow will last forever in the eternal punishment, which is hell. So we see the stark difference between godly sorrow and Worldly sorrow, godly sorrow is orchestrated by God's will, and worldly sorrow is orchestrated by self-will. Even though it is same, it can be a same pain or sorrow, but end place would be totally different. Now let's go to the second point. Let's go back to uh, today's passage. In verse ten, it says, "The uh, for the sorrow that is according to the will of God produ produces." A repentance without regret. Amen. So the second point is this. Godly sorrow 
by God's will, it produces repentance, but without regret. But the worldly sorrow, it produces regret. Now, what is regret, by the way? Regret is something that you want to go back to the past, so you could uh, probably change the time of the moment of your decision, so you can make a you can you could make a better decision. But the problem is, you cannot do that uh, because you don't know the future. You cannot go back to the past because of your limitation. You would be frustrated whatever decision that you came up with. That is regret. However, as we saw, the sorrow, the godly sorrow, by the will of God, leads to repentance without regret. Now, how is it possible? It's a simple logic, because it is orchestrated by the will of God, who foresees the future and who is in control of the time and everything. And we know whatever sorrow or pain that we go through by the will of God, it will be temporary, and the end result will be far better than we can even imagine. So that is based on the faith in the Lord. You know, the worldly sorrow is. Totally based on me, based on self. It is all about me, all about myself. But myself is leading myself to the deep sorrow, and I cannot even get away from it. And I am gripped with regret. I wish I could be there. I wish I could meet that person. I wish I could try the one. But the problem is, you cannot do anything about it. That is why you are in regret. However, the godly sorrow, based on the will of God. Even though it is sorrowful, painful, at the end we know that God is the winner, and He is saving us. He is、um, He is changing us and molding us and shaping us to、uh, to the image of Him. So it leads us to where not the regret, not the emotional state, but to. Repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is totally different from regret. Repentance is not a feeling or frustration, but the repentance is action. Well, it can start the same. It can start with remorse and pain and guilty in our heart, but that is not the end result. It is just the starting point that the Holy Spirit is exposing our heart about how sinful we are, and the Holy Spirit is leading us. To turn away from our sin and to turn to the Lord, and that is the repentance. We see、uh, many examples. You know,、uh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, he made a mistake. Judas made mistake. It was not just a mistake; it was a very grievous sin because Judas sold Jesus, and、uh, Peter denied Jesus three times—not even, not just one time, but three times. Both of them did terrible things, and Jesus already knew about them, about what they're going to do. However, what they did was totally different. Peter repented. But Judas only regretted. We know the story that Judas felt very shameful and even guilty about what he did when he sold Jesus. However, he did not repent. In anywhere in the scripture, I cannot find any place that、uh, Judas repented. However, he regretted. And he killed himself. However, Peter, when Peter denied Jesus three times, the Holy Spirit really re,、uh, reminded her of how what kind of sin he did. He felt so bad, and he felt guilty about what he did. However, he repented. He turned away from his sin, and Jesus came to Peter and restored him with his love. And then he, God used the. Peter, in an amazing way, as we see in Scripture. So you see the difference between the regret and repentance. The repentance is by the will of God, but regret is by self-will. And the worldly sorrow only leads to regret, but godly sorrow always leads to repentance, which is a huge blessing. That through repentance we can come to the Lord, and ultimately we can be saved. And that is the last point. Let's go back to today's passage. In verse ten, it says, "Leading to salvation." But the sorrow of the world produces death. So, what does really, what does this mean? Godly sorrow, you see, 
uh, is by will of God and leading to repentance, produces repentance, ultimately leading to sal salvation, which is life. You're going to have eternal life. Whereas the worldly life is by self-will, produces regret, and it leads to death. I already shared about the story between Peter and Judas. And Judas ended up with death, but Peter ended up with salvation. That, But not only salvation, he began, he became the ambassador for Christ Jesus. As we studied from two weeks ago, the 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20, it says, we are new creation in Christ Jesus, but not just that, in verse 20, that we are the ambassador for, ambassadors for Christ, that wherever we go, we represent who Christ Jesus is. So this is the difference between worldly, godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. The godly sorrow leads us to salvation, but the worldly sorrow leads us to uh, death. Now I know a story, and you know the story in John chapter 11. There was a great mourning, great devastation, the, uh, because the uh, day these people lost their loved one, the sibling, Lazarus, was dead. And Jesus came, and Jesus, even Jesus wept. However, that was not the end. That sorrow led to the great joy because Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and life. For those who believe in me will not see death, but will see the resurrection. And they saw the resurrection of Lazarus right in front of their eyes. So their, their mourning turned into dancing. They saw the glory of God right there. So godly sorrow, whatever sorrow that you go through, if you come to, if that leads, that will lead to repentance. And then through the repentance, you will see the life. You will see the salvation. I know a story of uh, Jim Elliot, and Jim Elliot was a great missionary, aspiring missionary, but when he landed in Ecuador, even before he was sharing anything, he was killed by the tribe. So it could be a devastation, great sorrow. But Jim Elliot's wife and uh, their children went into, went back to Ecuador and they began to share the gospel. And a lot of people in the tribe came to the Lord. What a great salvation. What a great life that they experienced. Even though they started with the sorrow, however, God turned sorrow into dancing. But I know another story, real story very shocking. There was an elder in a church, and this elder was respected by so many people in the church, and he served so well. Then uh, he was, uh, was a man of influence. However, uh, one day he received the uh, very shocking news that he got a terminal illness that he has only six months to live. He got very frustrated with that. He got angry at God, and he did not come to church as he used to, and he, he did not serve as he used to. And uh, he said, I am sick and tired of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, he fell and he died. How sorrowful, how, how devastating that is. Yes, he had a sorrowness. However, that sorrow was not a godly sorrow, but it was a worldly sorrow. He was a self willed man. He was not really regenerated or born again. Just because you were in the church for a long time doesn't mean that you are saved and you are going to heaven. You need to check the motivation. You are, are you living by the will of God or are you living by self will? He was a living. This man, this elder was living by self-will and then he had when he had the uh, the sickness he regretted everything that he did for god because he thought he if he served god for a long time that god would bless him but uh, when he did not see it when his self will self-desire was not fulfilled he turned against god and then he yelled at god screamed at god and ultimately he died in a very horrible horrible way so we see uh, the Bible is true. We need to believe. We need to really trust what the Lord says. There is a godly sorrow orchestrated by God's will, but there is a worldly sorrow that we have to be very careful because it is really starting from our ego, who, who I, uh, what I really want. So we must check, examine ourselves. We must have this godly sorrow. The question is, how can you have this godly sorrow? It is by the will of God. It is because the will of God is shown in 
um, the Word of God. So we need to pay attention to the truth. We need to pay attention to the Word of God because God's Word exposes who we are so that that will lead us to repentance. Remember, the Apostle Paul was writing the letter and that letter was not pleasant. However, that letter, the shocking and even offensive letter was actually a huge blessing to the people of Corinth because they could repent and turn away from their sin. So I want to encourage you not to pay attention to feel-good message or sermon because everyone, almost all, everyone wants to hear the kind of pleasant words. They want to hear the encouraging word. They don't want to hear the, uh, the condemning word. When they go to church or when they're at home, they want to listen to the podcast or YouTube video, YouTube sermon about how good they are and how good, great life they're going to have, how, gonna get, how, they, how they can get through all these troubles and ended up with the success in their life. Who would not like that kind of message? However, be careful because that kind of message would not make you to repent. That will only prompt you to seek your own desire, which will end up with end up with worldly sorrow that leads to death. It will be a miserable ending. However, listen to the truth. The truth of God is painful. Because Hebrews chapter 4, 12 says, The word of God is like a double-edged sword. It will penetrate your heart. It will cut your heart. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, the Bible, the Word of God is inspired by God and it's profitable to correct you, to rebuke you. Nobody wants to be rebuked. However, the Word of God rebukes us. So that, and that rebuke is a good rebuke because it's not to condemn you. It's not to put you into punishment, but it is to correct you. It is to have the spiritual surgery so that you can repent, you can turn away from your sin, you can stop your sin, and you can live a holy life as God designed you designed you to be so that's a good thing pay attention to the word of god read god's word seriously when you read god's word always pray lord jesus please help me let your holy spirit expose my heart so that i can repent of my sin i can turn away from my sin i can stop this filthy things so i will not do this anymore but i will live my life for you so always always pay attention to god's word and when you do that, God is going to produce you, produce in you an amazing, amazing things. So let's go back to verse, today's passage, and pay attention to verse 11. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow produced in you, what vindication of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what avenging of wrong, in everything you demonstrated yourselves to be innocent in the matter. Basically, it, it is going to produce you in a zeal and passion for God and a fear of God and you will have the justice in your life as well. So this is all the great things that will be produced in your heart. But if you pay attention to the worldly sorrow, if you are grieved with by that, you will have the passion for the world, you will have the zeal for the world, but you will have injustice in throughout your life. You will not have a fear of God, but you will have a fear of man. That will put you in misery. So we have to be very careful about this two different sorrows, godly sorrow or worldly sorrow. So which one do you have? Is your sorrow, is your pain worldly or is it godly? If it is godly, then rejoice in God. Repent of your sin. Turn, turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. God is using your sorrow to correct you, to shape you. But if you are in the worldly sorrow, same thing. Repent. Turn away from your sin. That sorrow will only put you in misery. Love for the money, love for all the other idols will put you to the core of a misery forever. So get away from it. Turn away from it. Do not go and don't touch it. But turn to Christ Jesus. Come to Jesus and receive His blessing, His touch, and get to know Him so that you will truly enjoy His mighty presence, even in the suffering and pain, because it is good. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful, profound message, the truth that there is a godly sorrow that you want us to be. But Father, we confess to you, sorrow is not easy, but thank you for the great hope that you are leading us to repentance that produces 
all this great characteristics that you listed in this passage. So Lord Jesus, please help us and guide us that we would not be dismayed or frustrated when we go through sorrow or the pain, but we would expect that your wonderful work in and through life, our life. We thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen.